Alright, what is going on guys, it's Taz here, and welcome back to the channel for quite a bittersweet one. With their season 3 finale, Stargirl has sadly come to an end over on the CW, as a result of the massive shakeups that have been happening behind the scenes, not only at Warner Brothers and DC, but at the CW network as well. With Stargirl coming to an end after three seasons, I thought it was only right to make my triumphant return to the YouTube space here at the beginning of a new year to give you guys my thoughts on the finale episode, this final season, and the series of Stargirl as a whole. So with that said, obvious massive spoiler warning for the entirety of Stargirl if you haven't seen it yet, it is streaming over on HBO Max so please go watch it, but without any further ado, let's just cause McStaff fly ourselves right into things. Stargirl's final season was structured in the style of a murder mystery following the mysterious death of the gambler after his return to Blue Valley trying to make amends for his past as a part of the ISA. Throughout the season, we would follow Courtney and the JSA as they uncover the mysteries surrounding the gambler's murder. All the while, Courtney would try and work her magic to help rehabilitate many of the show's past villains, showing that her real superpower was her belief in people and how they can change for the better. Another aspect of this season was the suspicious return of Sylvester Pemberton, aka Starman. His reemergence in Blue Valley seemed great at first, but slowly throughout the season, his true intentions were revealed. This led to our main threats and villains of the season, that being a reformed version of Jordan McKent, aka Icicle, the Ultra Humanite who had been posing as Starman, as well as Dragon King in the albino gorilla body of the Ultra Humanite. I really enjoyed the mysteries this season and how everything unfolded throughout the course of these final 13 episodes. There was just so much misdirection and amazing speculation to be had all throughout. At first you think Cindy Berman could be the killer, then some fingers point to Starman or maybe Cameron's grandparents as revenge for the death of Icicle, then we have that little side quest with the Helix Institute, Jenny and her brother Obsidian, which was set up for a spin-off that unfortunately we will never see. During the earlier parts of the season when I was theorizing about who the killer could be, I never would have thought that we would get a reformed icicle teaming up with the Ultra Humanite and Dragon King, but it all just worked out so well. Leading into the finale, however, the stage is set for one final epic showdown between the JSA and this season's team-up of villains, giving us one of the best final fights from the show's run. We get to see Courtney fully accept her role as Stargirl, realizing that she really is worthy of the staff and the power and responsibility that it all comes with. Cindy, Mike, and Jakeem team up to defeat the Gorilla Dragon King and turn him into a stuffed animal, which I thought was pretty funny, and the final showdown with Icicle led to Cameron flipping on his father and helping the JSA defeat him for what we thought would be the final time. With this episode serving as not only a season, but series finale, the back half was more of an epilogue to the show as a whole. Here we were able to wrap up many loose plot threads and the states of certain characters that would have otherwise been left unresolved. I thought the show did a great job with this, showing how after it's all said and done, everyone has been put back in a much better place than they started the season off at. Mike finally got closure on his real mother, Cindy found herself as a redeemed part of the team, Yolanda has started to make amends with her mother, Rick has gotten past his addiction to the hourglass, and Beth realized that she does want help from her parents with this whole superhero thing. Solomon Grundy does also finally make his re-emergence as well, and let me just take this as an opportunity to praise the show for its incredible effects and CGI work all throughout the series, not only with Grundy, but with the Ultra Humanite, the pink lightning genie from the Thunderbolt pen, as well as just all of the effects that come with the cosmic staff, especially after Courtney mastered some new abilities with it. 
and most importantly, Courtney has seemingly come full circle and completed her journey that started all the way back in Season 1. She has fully come into her role as Stargirl and the holder of the Cosmic Staff. She also helped give the Gambler's daughter closure on what happened to her father, which I think also helped Courtney really appreciate how Pat has become her true father way more than her biological one ever could. It was all just done so well, and if the show was going to end prematurely, I'm glad that they were able to at least give all of their characters some closure and leave them all off in a really good spot. And finally, we have a couple of stingers here at the end, the first of which is Artemis finally getting her sweet, sweet revenge on Icicle for the murder of her parents. What a fitting way to wrap that all up, just melting Icicle, there's no coming back from that. And the very last thing we get is a time jump to 10 years into the future. The JSA have been on countless world-saving adventures, they've brought the real Sylvester Pemberton back, Courtney is now Star Woman, Rick and Beth are getting married, Cameron is an official JSA member, Cindy has become the Dragon Queen, and most importantly, the Shade is giving a tour of the JSA headquarters. However, just when we think everything is about to wrap up, a breach opens and none other than the Flash, Jay Garrick appears, telling the Shade that there's more work to be done, and I mean, isn't there always? Never the End is the final slide of the show, and what more of a fitting way to end off such an incredible show. Letting the fans know that while this may be the end for the show, the characters will continue to live on forever and have many more incredible adventures for years to come. Stargirl was easily one of the best DC TV shows of the Arrowverse era, and while it's sad to have to say goodbye, I'm so glad that Jeff Johns was able to bring the character of Courtney Whitmore to life, honoring his late sister and creating such a wonderful superhero TV show. So I just wanted to give a massive shout out to the incredible cast and crew that gave us three incredible seasons of Stargirl. And if you guys would like to hear more about how the finale came to together, I'll link an interview that TV Line did with showrunner Jeff Johns down there in the description below. And with that said, I also wanted to give a huge thank you to all of you guys that have stuck around through my extended hiatus here on the channel. I really appreciate all of you who are still here, as well as anyone who is new to the channel. Welcome, I'm back and better than ever. Get ready for some amazing content coming throughout the year and into the future. But I want to know what you guys thought about the Stargirl series finale and the series as a whole down there in the comments comments below. But until next time guys, it's been Taz, and I'll see you guys in the next video.